Hi, and welcome to Live with Joy. I'm gonna give it a few moments for everybody to come on that post, and we're gonna go over what we're doing today, and we're going to discuss what you are going to need. So I'm just gonna give it another moment as everybody starts to come in, and um, let's kind of discuss what we have already been doing this week, okay? Um, yesterday, let's talk about yesterday, we did a push-pull for arms, and we focused on each circuit going through a push circuit and then immediately following a pull circuit and alternating a push and a pull circuit. Well, today we're gonna do the exact same thing, but for the lower body. We're gonna do a push pull for the legs. And what that's going to entail is working push movements and pull movements, working push dominant muscles and pull dominant muscles. And in the lower body, a lot of the movements are compound movements, which means we've got more than just one muscle group working at a time. So you will have push and pull muscles working at the same time for various um, exercises that we do today. But there are exercises that are more push dominant and work more push muscles. And there are exercises that are more pull dominant and those work more of the pull muscles. Doesn't mean that other muscles aren't working together to make those moves happen in the lower body, but that they're just more dominant. So what you will find is in the push exercises, you will be doing things like um, squats and lunges. Those are your more dominant push exercises. And we will also be doing some other exercises to isolate some of those um, particular push muscles, which today we're gonna be focusing on the quads and the calves as our push muscles. And when we do the pull exercises, the dominant exercises for those are variations of your deadlifts and also hamstring curls. So the pull muscles that we're gonna focus on are going to be the opposite of the calves, which are the shins, and then the opposite of the quads, which are the hamstrings, but also up into the glutes are gonna also be the pull muscles that we're gonna work. So that's basically the outline for our workout today in order to work the push-pull movement and um, to also get those push-pull muscles working today. What you're gonna need is your mat, which we're gonna need more towards the end, but I am gonna pull it out for when we do lunges. So if you want to use that mat with me for the lunges, have it handy and ready to go. Um, and then I just have one set of dumbbells today and they're just one heavy set that I am going to be using, okay? You can do all of these exercises without any weights. Um, you can use the weights to um, add more resistance to the exercise that you're doing. But if things like squats and lunges and deadlifts are already difficult for you to do, then you can just do it with your own body weight and don't even grab those weights, okay? And focus on the movements that you're doing without adding that resistance to it, okay? All right, so that's the plan. Let me get that music started and we can warm it up. All right, guys, let's get those shoulders down, the track back, engage that center and march it out, right and left. Stand nice and tall. So what we want to do in this warm up is get that lower body ready to go. So we want to get in some squats and lunges. Let's start that march. Let's go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Take those legs out wide, wide march. Let's go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. March it back in for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Let's take a ride for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. March it back in for four, three, two. Let's take a ride for four, three, two. March it in for four, three, two. Take a ride, four, three. Fold it wide and squat it. Bend and extend. Four more times, we slow it up. Four more. Three more. Two more. Down to up for two. Take it down for two. And up three more times. Down for two. And up two more times. Down for two. And up one more time. Down. Pick up your speed. Four, eight, seven. From here, we're gonna step back, right, left and reach it overhead. Get set two more times, two more. Now step back right and left. Step and bend if you can into that lunge. Nice and easy. 
It's just a warm up. So take it at a pace you can manage. Tap it or step and bend. For eight more times. Let's go eight. And from here back to a wide squat as we interlock those fingers behind the head or loosely behind those ears. Two more right here. Last two. Get those legs out wide right here. Interlock or loosely behind the ears. Either way, open that chest, squeeze, and retract the back. We're gonna keep it here for an extra set. Stay here. One more set. Eight more times. Eight. Seven, six, five. You've got four more. Last four. Last three. Last two. Release those hands. Wide march for eight. Four, three, two. March it in for eight. Four, three, two. Take it wide. Four, three, two. March it in for four, three, two. Take it wide for four, three, two. March it in, four, three. Take it wide and hold. Hands on those thighs and hinge forward with the flat back. Let's hold and roll it up halfway. Stretch that spine for a moment. Then flat back down and roll it all the way up. Allow that head to come up last. Roll the shoulders back. Now watch me for your first two exercises. 30 seconds for everything, four sets. We're gonna take our feet about hip to shoulder width apart. If you're holding the weights in your hands to your side, calf raises. So we're gonna work those calves, isolating those calves by pushing down and into the floor and lifting those heels up with the balls of our feet. I want you to really think about pushing the balls of the feet down as you lift those calves up, okay? And then from here, weights coming up and onto the back of those shoulders if you can. Okay, here you need to rest it down or you can even keep them at your side. I like to come up here and get my elbows up so I know that when I come into that squat, my chest is lifted. Now you can position your feet where you feel comfortable, somewhere around hip to shoulder width apart, maybe even a little bit more than shoulder width apart, but not too wide, okay? And from here, you're gonna sit down and up, and I want you to really think about pushing those feet, especially those heels, into the ground as you come up. Think about that pushing moment, the movement in that circuit one, okay? All right, let's get situated with those weights at the side. From here, think about pushing the balls of the feet into the floor and lifting those heels up so you're working through those calves. So we're isolating those calf muscles right now. And then we're gonna go into our compound move that's gonna be definitely quad dominant, but we'll also work a lot of the other muscles of the lower body, even those pull muscles are very quad dominant right here. It's all about those calves, pushing the balls of the feet into the floor as we lift those heels up and really think about that movement through our ankles. You're getting a little ankle mobility here as well. Good, let's get one more in. And then you've got five seconds to position those weights wherever you choose. If you want your feet a little wider or you want to reposition your feet, go for it. And then right here, I want you to think again about pushing those feet into the ground as you come up, as if you're trying to push the floor away from the body. So since we're working the push movements, and the push muscles, I want you to really think about the push activation. So really think about those feet, especially the heels, pushing down and into the floor. And imagine you are trying to push that floor away from your body as you lift up. Good, get that last one in. Weights come to the side. Reposition your feet if you need to. Push the balls of the feet into the floor as you rise those heels up. Good, really think about that movement. The pushing of the balls of the feet into the floor as the heels lift up, activating through the back of those legs, those calf muscles in the lower part of those legs underneath the knees. Get that last one in, position your feet or reposition if you'd like to. Get those weights in a position you feel comfortable with and go for that squat once again. Focus on the push movement when you come up. Push that floor away from your body. Good. 
Good, get that mind-body connection on what it is that you're working. That push. Good, get your last one in. Finish up your last one. Reposition those feet if you need to. And again, push the balls of the feet into the floor as you lift those heels up and lower back down. Good, 15 seconds. Good, take your time and really, again, think about that connection of your push. Readjust the feet if you need to. Set those weights where you feel comfortable. And again, focus on that push as you come up. seconds. Good. Finish up or get that last one in. Take those weights back to the side. Reposition the feet if you need to. Final set right here. Pushing through the balls of the feet to lift those heels up and lower them back down. Good, keep the rest of that body nice and tall. 10 more seconds, last and final set right here. Good, finish up your last one. Good, reposition your feet if necessary. Get those weights into the position you're comfortable with. Lower down and then push your body away from that floor using those legs. Really think about that powerful lower body pushing you away from that floor. Push. Good, nice and easy. Lower those weights down. Take the weights down if you have them. Good, give yourself a little rest from that grip. Resetting that clock. Get some water if you need it. I'm gonna take a sip. And then our next two exercises, we are focusing on our pull movements, our pull muscles. I wanna start with the complete opposite from the calf raises, and we're gonna do toe raises. So what I'm trying to do is pull my toes up and off of that floor. It's not gonna be as big of a move as those calf raises, okay? Because we're not, we're just rolling back and into the heels and trying to get those toes off of that ground. That's a little bit tougher of a move. If you need to hold on to something, hold on to a chair, countertop, or anything else that you need to. Then we're gonna take the weights to the front, get those shoulders down and back. We're gonna keep a soft knee as we hinge forward. And this is what I want you to focus on with that straight back, pull up. Okay, so we are hinging forward and it's all about that pull as we come up from the glutes down through the hamstrings, okay? All right, so complete opposite of what we were just working, pull, muscles, and movements. Let's get those feet flat, weights are gonna hang down to the side, and I want you to focus on lifting both of those toes up. Now, if you have a hard time lifting both, lift one at a time, one, and then lift the other. You'll still get that pull, but you'll alternate it, okay? On the clock for 30 seconds right here. So, once again, you can either option for lift one foot, lift the other toe, or if you can maintain that balance and lift both of them, go ahead. One at a time might be a little bit easier for you. You can also be holding on to a chair as you lift both of those toes up, or again, just go into alternating, and you might have more movement, better movement, by going one at a time if you can't maintain that balance on those heels. Right here, take the weights to the front, get that shoulders down and back, straight back is gonna come down. Hold there a moment, and then I want you to think of the pull movement that's coming up, okay? Hinge forward, and now you've gotta pull up through your glutes and your hamstrings to come back up to that standing position. And make sure you come all the way up. Don't cheat yourself and stop here and then go back down and keep this move short. So if you come down, wherever you come down, you still need to pull yourself 
all the way back up to that good posture. Get your last one in, finish it out. Weights are coming to the side. And once again, either one foot at a time, lifting those toes up, or if you can maintain that balance and lift both of them, right there, pause for a moment and take it back down. So you've got to use the complete opposite muscles that you just did in the cap raises to bring the toes up off of that floor. Good, focus on each one. If you fall out of position, not a problem. Just reset yourself and go for it again. And one at a time if you need to. If you can't maintain that balance, better to go alternate. All right, right here. Hinge forward, pause for a moment, and then think about that pull coming up is what we want to focus on. So any of those deadlift versions where we hinge forward and we bring ourselves back up, that is gonna work more of your pull muscles through that posterior chain, through those glutes, through those hamstrings. Good, take those weights to the side, and once again, you can alternate those toe lifts so that you can focus on one at a time without losing your balance, or you can try to lift both of them and then place them back down. Again, this is not gonna be as big of a movement as those calf raises. You might barely be able to lift those toes. And again, if you keep falling out of balance, just alternate so you can maintain balance and still get movement, okay? Because this is also gonna work mobility of the ankles as well. Good, really take your focus into what it is that you're doing. Good, let's take those weights to the front, get those shoulders down and back, maintain that good posture. As you hinge forward, pause for a moment, and then think about that pull movement that's bringing you back up. Hinge forward, and pull yourself back up. Good, really think about what it is that you're doing today, which is why we are doing exercises we've done before, but we are thinking about it in a different way through movement of whether we're pushing or we're pulling. So you can really think about the muscles that are needing to do that push or that pull. All right, right here. Lift those toes one at a time, or both of them coming up. seconds. Last and final set of those toe raises. Finish it up. Get that last one in and then take the weights to the front. Reset your posture and from here hinge forward keeping that nice flat back. Pause where you feel comfortable pausing and use those strong pull muscles to bring you up. more seconds. Good. You're going to get that last one in. Place those weights down. Give yourself that moment. Wiggle out those fingers. Take a little break. Get some water if you need. Resetting that clock and watch me. This is where I'm going to bring my mat in. You don't have to if you're not comfortable with stepping over that mat. I am going to use it and I'm also gonna use it because I'm gonna come down to my knee on the second exercise. All right, so right here, we're going to start in front, okay? We're gonna take that weight up in front of our chest. We're gonna step back and into a rear lunge, okay? I'm gonna come down, not all the way to that mat, but as close as I feel comfortable going. And then from here, I'm gonna rise my knee up. Okay, this is not where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna actually take an extension out through that quad, okay? So I'm pushing out with that extension, and then I'm coming back. And again, I want you to think about the press, or push up, drive the knee in, and extend the left and out where we can isolate that quad on it. On the second move, we're just staying here in the staggered stance over that mat, okay? So my back foot, I'm up and on that toe. We're gonna come down now. I'm gonna come all the way to that mat so I can really focus on that push up from that floor. You're gonna go, if it's only this much, that's fine, and then focus on that push up. Now we're gonna alternate sides, so you're only gonna have to do each side 
two times, okay? So you're gonna start behind or in front of your mats, okay? If you're using the mat, you don't have to. If you're not comfortable with that mat there, it's totally fine. If you're not comfortable with the weight, get rid of it. I'm gonna do one with you, and then I'm gonna start that clock. Let's we'll start with that right foot. Step and come into that lunge, but not all the way to the ground. As you come up, you wanna bring the knee in, extend and lengthen it back, step back into that lunge. So now, you pace it out, whatever feels comfortable for you. Remember, we are not rushing here today. We wanna to focus on each move down, lift the knee, extend and lengthen out. If you wanted to have a chair to hold on to with that left hand, you absolutely could to help you move through this and maintain that balance at the same time. Knee comes up, we're gonna extend and lengthen out. Good, so here's where we isolate that quad push muscle. Good, and now I'm gonna come all the way to the floor. You can start at top, okay, and then you come down to wherever. Now what I want you to think about here is that push up. So if you can come all the way to that mat, think about that push up from that mat. So come on down and push up. And if you wanna make it even harder, you can come as close to the mat as you can and then push up. If I'm gonna get that low, I happen to like to just take it to the floor and then I'm focusing on my push as I come up. And then I can lower down and rest there for a moment and focus on that push when I come up. All right, step it in, because we're gonna go to the other side. Set your body. We are now stepping back with that left to lower down, wherever you feel comfortable. Drive that knee up, extend and lengthen it out, and take it back. Now you're only gonna take that knee up to wherever you can focus on that extension. So if you need to be low, you can. If you wanna come higher to extend, you can as well. So you need to find that range of motion of where you can extend that leg out, lower or higher. That's gonna be up to you. Good, all right, so again, position yourself here, or like me, start down on the floor, and then we focus on that push as we come up. So lower down wherever you can, even if it's not all the way to the mat, and push up from there. Even if you make it the tiniest of a move, you are just focusing on that push as you come up. So it can be this little, and then focus on the push from that small movement, okay? Do what you can. If you're not comfortable with the lunges, you can do some squats, that's still a push move. Good, and step it in. All right, we're going back to that right. If you don't want to come into the lunge, you could just take that step back, bring that knee up, extend and lengthen out. Okay, so take your options. Option is to bend, bring the knee up and extend it out, but if the bend is too much, just take it back, step it in. So you're setting up that move, but you don't have to go into that lunge yet if it's too much. You're still getting your quad work right here on the extension. Good, and now we're gonna hold that nice wide lunge stance, either coming down without touching that mat, pushing up, or if you'd like to come all the way down and really focus on that push up from the floor, that's gonna really activate that push every time you come up. I want you to think about that push through that front heel and foot, through the back ball of that foot as you come up from that ground or from whatever position you are pushing up from. Good, and remember, you can just do squats if just the static lunge is too much. All right, let's go to that left side. So we're gonna step back, and again, either just staying there, lowering down if you can, then rising it up into a knee, extending and lengthening it out with that knee extension. Good, think about that front foot that you're pushing to pull up to that knee. Even if you're just stepping back here, you still have to push through this leg, even if you didn't bend in that lunge, to come up and then extend. All right, starting from that staggered stance over that mat, lowering down wherever you can, pushing into that floor to come all the way up. And if you can, all the way down to that mat and push yourself all the way up from that floor. Good. If you're bringing that knee to the floor, make sure you are gently bringing it. You have to make sure you have control. You're not just dropping down. So if you drop, then you find where you 
don't have to drop, and you work on that first before you come all the way to that floor. All right, come on up, get that mat out of the way. We got another standing circuit. Now we're gonna work now those pull muscles. Going back to those pull muscles. Just resetting that clock. All right, and I'm gonna hold on to just one weight here as well. And that weight we're gonna hang down. We're gonna do two more versions of our deadlifts. We're gonna start with our single leg deadlift, which looks like this, see I'm balancing. Now I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna do a little hamstring curl, opposite of what we just did with that knee extension. So holding here, bend and extend, and come back up. Now if you can't keep that foot off the floor, then you'll just go here, do your hamstring crawl from there, and then all the way back up, okay? And then our second move is gonna be to get those legs out wide and turned out. We're doing a sumo deadlift squat. So what that means is as we bend our knees, it's like I wanna put this weight to the floor, so I'm hinging forward. That's the difference. So when I come up, I gotta pull through my glutes and into my hamstrings to hinge my body back up. So it's not just a squat by bending the knees, it's a hinge forward which makes it a deadlift, okay? All right guys, and we're gonna switch that single leg each step. So let me start with one with you guys and I'll start that clock. Left foot's gonna be our standing leg, so you see how I have this one bent and ready to go. Hinge forward, hold that position, bend and extend that knee to bring that heel to your bottom. Come on up and repeat that side. So same side, you're not switching. You're staying on that right leg to hinge and lift that leg up. Maintain that position as you curl and lift yourself back up to that standing position. Good, so you're gonna work stability and balance in that standing leg. Also that pulling up movement is coming from that left leg. This is where we have to pull for that left leg to come back up. And while we're here, we are doing a hamstring curl to isolate that pull muscle on the right. All right, let's get the legs out wide. Toes turned out slightly. As we bend our knees, we hinge forward like we want to put that weight to the floor and come back up. Don't round the shoulders though. Keep that chest open. So we're not trying to drop like that. We still want to keep everything open. It's a hinge with that bend. And that's what makes it that deadlift because we're hinging forward. We're not keeping that chest up right. But we still want that chest open. We just hinge forward through the hips as we come down like we want to put that weight down. And then everything helps to pull us back up. All right, let's go to that left side. Right here, our right leg's going to balance us. We're going to do that hamstring curl on the left. And now that right leg is what's going to pull us back and into position. Hinge forward, hamstring curl, and pull it up. Good. So really think about those pull movements. Hinge forward, we're pulling that hamstring, and then we're pulling ourselves back up to standing. Get the legs out wide, toes turned out, shoulders down and back. And again, as we bend the knees, we are hinging forward, and that's what's gonna activate those pull muscles to bring us back up from that hinge. But for this one, we got a wider stance than we did with our first deadlift, and we're also bending our knees as we hinge forward. We're not keeping them straight like we did in our previous pull circuit. Good, get your last one in, finish it out. And right here, we're going back to that right leg that's coming back. Left leg is holding your balance. Right leg is gonna do that hamstring curl. Left leg is gonna pull you back up to your position. Good, make that mind-body connection of what it is that you're doing. Hinging forward, bending and extending for that pull through the hamstring, pulling up through that glute and hamstring on the left side to bring you back to standing. Good, all right, let's take those legs out wide. Toes turned out, upper body is tall. As we bend, we hinge forward like we wanna put that weight on the floor and come on up. Good, hinge forward like you wanna put that weight on the floor. Keep those feet flat, 
You still have a little bit of a pushing movement through those feet, but I want you to think about that pull up from that hinge position that you're working. Okay, remember, a lot of these, like I said, are compound movements, so we are moving more and using more than just the pull muscles. The push muscles are definitely working with a lot of this as well, but the movement is more dominant of pull. Hinge forward, bend and extend, especially here. You've got a lot of pull dominant, dominant here. With that hamstring curl and with that single leg deadlift pulling you back up to your standing position. Good, get that last one in. And one more time for that sumo deadlift right here. Toes turned out, hinge forward as you bend the knees, trying to bring that weight towards that pull, wherever that is for you. And use those strong muscles behind you to pull you back up from the glutes and the hamstrings. Good, finish up your last one. And come on up, good job guys. All right, we are gonna get that mat out now. And from here, I'm gonna do some floor work. You're not gonna need to have those weights. I want you to focus without the weights for that floor work. All right, so we are gonna have a push movement, which also does have a pull movement in it, but I want you to think about the push, okay? So it is kind of a push and a pull. It's gonna be a hip thrust from that bridge position. So we take our feet flat, we're gonna bring our arms at our side, and we're gonna do that hip thrust up into the bridge. Now, yes, you have a pull through all here, but what I want you to think of is the push of the feet down and into the floor. So lower down nice and easy. As you come up, I want you to think about pushing those feet down and into that floor as you lift those hips up. Second move, we're gonna focus on quad right here, mobility and activation, extending. So we're gonna hold one leg and we're gonna activate that quad with our knee extensions, holding it in position, okay? You, we will be switching sides, okay? You can decide whether you want a pointed toe or flex. Pointed's gonna make it a little gentler on the hamstring. Flex is gonna make it a little tougher, okay? So let's get those feet down. Let's get those palms to the side. And from here, we're gonna do one and then I'm gonna start that clock. I want, as you lift up, to think of the push down and into the floor with your feet, especially your heels. And now slowly come back down from that position, okay? Once again, I want you to think about that. Push through those heels, push those feet down to the floor like you're trying to push that floor away from you as you come up, push that floor away from you. Push that floor away. So again, we, we really have both push and pull working here, but I want you to focus on the push. All right, grab that right leg underneath. Either flex or point, whatever you can do. If you find you flex and you can barely extend that leg, try to point it. And then you might be able to actually extend more with the point rather than the flex. And here is all quad dominant work. Okay, this is what extends that knee, that quad. So we are having a nice isolated movement here with that quad muscle. Good, take those feet back to the floor, arms at your side. And again, push those feet into the ground as you lift your backside up and then gently lower back down. I want you to think about the push of the feet into the floor. Imagine just like that squat that you are trying to push that floor away from you. And this move is basically a squat on the ground. So if you have trouble with your squats, this is a great exercise that you can do in place of them. Good, lower down, grab that left leg, hold it in position, extend and lengthen up and out of that knee wherever you can go, trying to extend it fully if you can. And once again, see if you do better with a pointed toe or a flexed foot. Work 
getting that full extension. This is going to work that knee mobility as well. Take those hands to the floor, both feet down. Push the feet into the floor. Again, I want you to imagine you're pushing that floor away from your body, and then gently lower it back down. Again, that mind-body connection. Think about that push, and that's going to help you activate more muscles without even changing your movement as much. You're just really thinking about the muscles that are activating to push those feet down and into the floor, and you're gonna get a little bit more of that quad work as you lift up through your backside. Good, get that last one in. Good, and grab that leg. It's back to your right, and get that nice extension through that knee right here, extending and lengthening up. You guys stay right there, decide if you need to flex or point it. Good morning, guys. Hang in there, you got it. Keep going, keep going. Work that extension. Good, really think about that extension out. Five more seconds. Good, last one. And you're back down, feet are flat, arms are at your side. Again, think about the push of the feet into the ground. And as you push, that's gonna give you more energy to lift up through your backside as you push. Push those feet down, push, push, push. Good, and we're gonna go with that knee extension on that left side, hold it in position, extend and lengthen it up. Again, find out if you're better off with that foot flexed or that foot pointed. that straight leg up from a plank position. Of course, that's going to be, that option is going to be a little bit harder. So you decide where you want to be. If you are in that plank position and you decide that this is too difficult to maintain for you, come onto the knees and simply go right back to here, alternating that extension out on the knees. No big deal. You can change it at any point. If you feel this is too easy and you want to try to go into that plank, See if you can get a couple here before that time is done. Make sure you get each side, bring it in, take a little bit of a stretch, come on up, lift that right leg up, and from here, you lock your knee in position now, and we're focusing just on that hamstring curl, back of the leg, pulling that heel in towards your body. One more time, bring it in, sit back on the heels, take a little moment there, back into all fours, and then go ahead and extend and lengthen that leg from your knees, or again, if you want to make it harder, 
from that plank position, you are locking everything here, and you are lifting straight up. So rather than a push down, it's a pull up towards the ceiling, especially from this plank position, but same here, you're pulling up from that floor to extend that leg. Good, if you need, take a little moment here, and now we're going to that left side, bring that knee up, lock it in position, extend and bend right here. Two more sets, you're not done yet. Take a little moment. And again, starting from all fours as you lengthen and extend that leg out. Or if you want harder option right here, holding that plank position. And again, if at any point this feels like it's too much, you can't maintain that plank position to stay here. Just bring it back to your knees and alternate from there. Get that last one in on each side. Take a little stretch. Go ahead, take those wrists out of position. Maybe come up on the fingertips. Lift up, get that right leg up. Lock that knee in position. And bend and extend through that hamstring. Point that heel in towards your bottom. onto those fingertips, stretch out that wrist, come on up, and once again, from your knees, extending and lengthening out your last and final set, or you can go with option number two, in that plank position, and lifting your legs straight up, pulling that leg up towards that ceiling. Get one more in on each side. Bring it in. Sit back if you need. Lift to your fingertips. Rise up onto all fours. Get that left leg up. Lock that knee in position. And hamstring curl for your final set right here. Finishing it out. Sit back on those heels. Take a little moment here. And then I want you to bring it on to your back. And I'm going to give you an option here. We're going to do one hold, kind of like how we ended class yesterday. One hold with a little bit of very, very movements. Okay, now you're going to either go back to where we were doing hip thrust, but it's going to be just holding that bridge, pushing those feet down, and pulling that body up. And I want you to hold it while you're thinking about pulling up and pushing the feet down. Now, if you want to make this a little bit harder, you can come here, we're going to do it in tabletop, pushing the feet into the floor and lifting those hips up, okay? And then we're going to be lifting one leg at a time and holding that as well as we extend that leg, okay? So if you feel like you're going to be more comfortable here, go for it. If you want to challenge yourself, you can come into that tabletop. I'm going to start here and then I'll come into the tabletop as well, okay? So either here or from your hands, I want you to start to pull Push your feet into the floor and lift your hips up to as high as you feel comfortable with and then I want you to stay right there. And you're not doing anything except staying there. So same thing if you're in that tabletop, I'm going to start pushing my feet into the floor and I'm pulling my body up. So I want you to think about that push down with the feet and that pull up with the center of that body. And I want you to think about those two things happening right here. Your push and your pull. Push down with your feet, pull up with the rest of your center of your body, and stay right there. Now, whether you are on that floor, stay there, you're not moving, I'm moving just so I can come here with everybody down here. I want you to start to 
extend one leg and see if you can hold. If not, that's okay. You are just going to stay right here. And same thing. If you're here, see if you can extend that one leg. Balance and hold. Good. Breathe. Now gently start to bring that leg back in. And I want you to extend the other one and hold it. Whether you're on your shoulders or your hands. At the same time, you're pushing that foot that's on the floor down. You're lifting the center of your body up. Start to bend that leg back. Hold. Give me that pull up. Push those feet down. Reset your body. Make sure it's still pulling and still pushing. For four, three, two, and lower it down. Hug your knees in. You are all done. Fantastic work, guys. Stay right here for a moment. And let's extend that. Uh, take that left leg rounded to the floor as we extend the lengthen through the right and rotate that ankle. Awesome work, guys. Other direction. And come back to the center. Flex and point. And flex and hold. Pull that leg in. So there is a workout for your lower body that incorporates your push movements, your pull movements, that work your push muscles and your pull muscles. We've done a lot for the upper body push and pull muscles, but we really didn't go over the lower body push and pull muscles because there's a lot of compound movements in the lower body exercises that work everything, but it is nice to really see which ones are more push dominant and which are more pull dominant, which is why we're doing this today. Let's take that right ankle onto the left leg and pull it in. And relax, hug both knees in. Take that right foot onto the floor. As you extend and lengthen up to the left, rotate that ankle. And other direction. Back to the center, flex and point. Take that ankle onto the opposite leg, hug it in, get a nice little stretch right there. And we hug both knees in. Nice and easy, we're gonna make our way up to our feet. So let's come to our feet, hands on the floor. I'm gonna allow my bottoms to come up first as I extend my legs. Roll that body up. You can come up any other way you feel comfortable with if you need to. Roll those shoulders back and down. Let's take those hands on the thighs. Hinge forward with the flat back and hold. Roll it up, stretch that spine right there. And then take a flat back down and let's roll it all the way up. One more time, roll the shoulders back. Good, and let's take a deep breath in. Exhale it down, one more time in. Exhale it down and you are all done with that workout. Awesome job today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be here tomorrow, and I will be outdoors at the MIYJCC, mid YJCC. You can register if you'd like to join me. Tomorrow is supposed to be a really, really nice morning. So make sure if you want to come and join me, go to the MIYJCC.org and register, okay? And then you can come join me outdoors for our workout, or you can join me here virtually at 9.30, okay? It's our start time, 9.30 tomorrow. We are gonna be working on cardio and core, all from a standing position tomorrow, okay? So we're gonna have some twisting movements and we're gonna have some things to bring that intensity up as well, okay? Awesome job today, guys. Thank you so much. I hope that you learned a little bit about the movements that push, the movements that pull, and the muscles that do both the push and pull as well for the lower body. I hope you felt activated. Awesome job. Don't forget that you can always come back to this page, click on videos to get this workout, or you can share it or save it so it will be somewhere for you to access easily as well. All right, thank you again for joining me today. I will be back tomorrow to finish out our week at 9.30. Bye-bye, everybody.